Hello everyone, I'm Alicia. Welcome to my Beautiful Nights channel. For this video, I'm going to show you guys how to make this really easy macrame bracelet. It's so cute. This is what it looks like close up. I really love it. Now, I learned how to do this wrap on Pinterest. You can go onto Pinterest and find short little videos less than 30 seconds long teaching how to do a technique or a knot. Like, for example, you can learn how to do the lark's head knot, square knot, backwards knot, all different kinds of knot. And I found several videos like over a dozen of them showing how to do this wrap right here and I don't even know what this is called it didn't have a name so I'm just gonna call this a zigzag because that's what it looks like to me it's a zigzag wrap that's the technique I would call it and um I did this bracelet doing my um favorite how I pretty much do all of my macrame bracelets with my button first. I like to do a button on my macrame bracelets before the loop. I see a lot of people doing the loop first and then the button at the end, but I've never liked doing it that way because I've always had terrible results. Um, the, the loop would be too big for my button or too small and I had to start it over from the beginning and it was just a pain in the butt and I would lose my bracelet mm -hmm. because like I said the sizes were off. So I always like starting with a button first and then I do my square uh, macrame knot right there okay and then I do the pattern I do the square knots again and then I do like the large head knot here in the sides for my button loop and then I finish off again with square knot I do overhead knot and then I like to decorate the ends of my cords because I like to have my macrame bracelets finished all over I want every little part of it to look really pretty so this is how they turned out and by the way the way that I do this is very durable I've never lost a bracelet with how I start and finish my macrame bracelets like this so I think you guys are gonna like it so let's go over the list of materials you're going to need Chinese nylon knotting cord I love this cord it is my favorite cord to knot with. It's a braided cord, it's not twisted, it's really durable, it's synthetic so you can melt it so it doesn't come unraveled. Now the size I am using is 0.8 millimeter. Okay, this is a turquoise color. I got this from BB Craft. This is the color that I used in the purple one here. I'm going to link this cord down below in the description bar. It comes in a bunch of different colors. Here's a purple one. I will be using this one in the video. Here it is in coral so cute and I love this color um, when I first bought this on BB craft it looked different on the screen and then when I got it I totally fell in love with it it's a golden um, bronzy color it's metallic looking it's really gorgeous okay so I'll link those cords below hopefully they're all still in stock now you're gonna need to cut two lengths of cord one length will need to be two foot long and your second length will need to be four foot long the reason why the other one is double the length is because you're gonna be doing most of your work wrapping and tying knots with the four foot cord okay now you're also going to need a button and you can use a two hole four hole or shank button it's up to you but I do like to use really small buttons for this because this is such a small bracelet it, it the proportion I like to have it proportioned with my bracelet so I'm using four millimeter beads and the beads that I'm using are from the curated bead box that $20 subscription that I open with you guys the purple ones are from there they're electro plated they have nice size holes and these here are dyed howlite that turquoise bead there and both of those are from the box but um, I think that you'll find that you'll be able to use a lot of different um, gemstone beads with this project which I really like and um, I'm also wondering about 6 OC beads I think they will work with this and if they do it would be epic I really think they do I, I th think they would work because they're very similar to these purple ones right here but if you do use 6 O's I recommend that you go with either Czech Preciosa 6 OC beads or Miyuki C beads I think those will work best for this project and you can also use rondelles that's what I'm going to be using in the tutorial today and the rondelles I'm using are actually a little bit bigger I think they're like 5 by 6 millimeter in size my bead caliper is broken right now, so I don't know for sure. But yeah, you do have several different bead options. So the first thing we're going to do is our button. And I already went ahead and put that on. And all you do is you fold your cords in half. You pass the tails to the top of your button. 
pull them out the bottom pretty easy right and then you need to attach your bracelet down to something you want this to remain stationary but you just don't want the button end to be stationary you also want the tail end to be stationary because you need this to be taunt while you're working on it while you're tying knots and wrapping so I'm using a clipboard but you can use a beetle on tying station you can use a bead loom um, I use these a lot I clip these down to my desk I put the button through there and I tie the other end down to the, the tray that I have in my drawer and I tie knots like that but for filming purposes I'm going to use this clipboard because I want to make sure you guys can see what I'm doing and it's an issue that I've been having a lot lately when I go to film um, macrame tutorials is trying to film it in a way that you can see what I'm doing especially with how I have my tripod set up so I'm going to rig this up here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach this part here to my clipboard because my clipboard is so high that you can't see the top up there right so I have to extend this and then I'm going to take this button and I'm going to pass it through here just like this and I will center it okay and then I'm going to find the cord that's the longest the four foot cord Okay, so this is my two foot cord. It's folded in half, so I have one foot on each side. And then taking the four foot cord, which is also folded in half, it gives me two feet on each side. So going like this, I'm pulling it taunt, and I'm making sure that my ends meet up. Make sure they are even. Okay, you want them to be even. So what I do is I get them even like this, and then I pull this tight. You can loosen this up here if you need to to get it center. And then once I have this even, I pull these cords down and I clip these down with another clip. Okay. So I think I need to bring this down just a little bit more so you can see. Or maybe I can adjust my camera. Okay. And then I have my cords here that are two feet long. And right now, for the beginning of this, I'm going to be tying square knots with the two foot cord, the very short cord. And then what I do after I get my knots tied, I'm going to put beads on the short cord and then I'm going to be doing the rest of my knotting and the wrapping with the very long four foot cord. Okay? So I'm going to go ahead and make sure that this is even because you don't want to have like an inch on one side that will throw off your design and in this project we barely have any waste because I don't like wasting materials so I always give exact measurements once you get your cords even you're gonna want to start tying your square knots so what I do is I always start m with my right cord and I put the right over the center and then I take left go over right under center and through this loop like this okay and then I bring this knot up Okay, and then I take left, I go over center, right goes over left, under the center cord, and through the loop, like this. Okay, and that's my first square knot, and I tie a total of four knots. So now I'm going to take the right side over the center, left over right, under center, through the loop. Okay left over center right over left under center through the loop there's two square knots and then I'm going to do right again left under center through the loop left over center right over left under center through the loop okay so that looks like three and one more square knot I'm gonna take the right go over center left goes over right under center through the loop pull this tight left over center right over left under center through the loop and now what I have to do is string on my beads onto my short cords here okay and then I will tie these down beads will be on these and then I'm gonna go to the long cord so go ahead get your beads and start stringing them once you get both sides strung I will show you what to do next 
I'm back and I realized that I forgot to mention that you will need a lighter. I didn't put that on my list, but what I usually do is I take a lighter in this quartz synthetic and I melt the ends and I twist it till it's shaped like a needle, just like that. It's pointed. And it's easy to put your beads on. If you don't melt it, you will struggle because you have a little bit of freight at the end of trying to get your beads through. So make sure you use a lighter and melt it into a point. So as you can see, I put my beads on and I put an even amount on both sides. So now what I'm going to do, now that I have my beads strung on, I'm going to take my long cords and set them free and then I'm going to split them so one's on top and one is on the bottom. So I'll, I'll take these over here to the left and then I'm going to grab these cords that have the beads and I'm going to put them together make it snug and attach this to my board. So a little trick that I discovered to get really good tension on this and to make it easier is to attach something down here onto these two cords. You can't see it down there, but there's you know, the cords are down there. Um, I put something on these cords so these beads don't slide up and down like crazy. When they slide up and down, it makes it hard to keep a good tension. So I like to slide them up like all the way, pretty much is what I found. And I take a bead stopper, okay, and I just put it onto the cords. It's gonna look just like this down here. You can't see it though because it's out of frame. But that's what it's gonna look like, okay? If you don't have a bead stopper, you could try a gator clamp and you might also be able to do uh, one of these. But that might actually come off, I, I don't know. I'm gonna try that one. Okay, so slide those up. Put on my little bead stopper, okay, I have a little bit of space there, and as you work this, these cords are going to fill in between the beads, and you will have to slide this down a little bit, okay, but just this is just to keep good tension for us, okay, so now I have this cord here that's on the top, and I weave my other one to the back side, and what I'm going to do is a twist and wrap technique, so I twist these two cords over here, I now pass the top, which is going to the bottom, around through the back, and then the top one here, which was on the back, is over the top like this, okay, and I go behind my first bead, okay, and then once I get over here, I twist these two cords again, okay, so I twist like this, okay, and then I bring them to the left side now, both of them. Make sure that these cords are slid up. You don't want to see the cords that your beads are on. Now I'm going to twist these two again and come to the right side. Okay? And you want to pull it snug because you want to make sure that the beads are popping in the cords popping in between your beads. Now I'm over here. I'm on my third bead. I'm going to twist these two again. Okay, and then come to the left side by wrapping. Okay, I now have this, and you might want to slide your your little bead stopper down just a little bit, get a little bit of slack. Okay, I'm going to twist again here on the side, and then come and wrap around and come to the right side. Okay, make sure you pull it snug. And then over here, I'm going to twist again. And then wrap around to the left side. Pull these cords over. Okay, and now have this. And boy, will I ever find a way to do this. I've tried so many different things to tie knots on. But, but filming it is a different story, trying to film it. Okay, I'm going to twist on the left side now. And then I wrap around to the right side and I pull that snug because I want to make sure my cords are sitting right in between those beads. Now this here is getting a little tight on me so I'm going to hold this in place and slide my, my bead stopper down just a little bit. Okay, I'm going to twist my cords again just like this and then wrap them around my next bead. Ok, 
Okay, twist again and go around the next bead wrapping to the right just like that. The further you go, the easier it gets. Twist again and then wrap to the left. Pull it snug so that you're in between the two beads and then twist again and wrap to the right. Like that. Okay. Twist again and wrap to the left diagonally. Okay, I'm going to stop, check it, looks good. I'm also going to pull my stopper down a little bit more. I just do like a quarter of an inch at a time. Okay, it looks really tidy, looks clean. I'm going to twist again here on the side. And then wrap to the right. Okay, twist again here. And then wrap to the left. Okay. I'm going to twist again, swapping my cords and wrapping to the right. Like this. And I just do this all the way down until I run out of beads. All right, so I am back and I'm now going to take off this clip. I put this other one on here to keep these cords in place while I adjusted my bracelet so I can show you how to finish this off. I'm going to take that clip off now. Okay, and I have this. And now what I have to do is tie square knots here. So I'm going to take this cord that's on the top and I'm going to pass it around to my right side because I need one cord on each side in order to finish this off. Okay, I'm then going to take the cord on the right and I'm going to tie square knots. I'm going to go over top of the center cord and then I'm going to take the left cord, go over the right, underneath the center and through this loop. And it's kind of hard to show this, but I'm basically just tying a square knot. And what the whole time what I'm trying to do is keep this tight up here, which it gets loose on me. And there's really nothing I could do about that. But once I get that knot done there, I can come back and make some adjustments. So I'm going to slide this up. Get my knot readjusted here. Okay, it's supposed to be on this side. Get that tight. And slide my knot up. Like that, and it actually worked. That was the first time I did it on camera, and it worked. I am surprised. All right. This bracelet is very easy to make, but for some reason, I have a really hard time trying to film macrame stuff because I have to attach it down to somewhere and have a glass tabletop, and there's nothing really for, for me to attach it to. So I go through so many different looms and things trying to get it just right, and I think I'm going to make this here a little bit tighter. Okay, okay, so that's tighter. That should help me. So now I'm going to tie the rest of my square knot. So I have to do the left cord now. And right goes over the left, under center, through this loop. Okay, just like this. Pull that tight. And now right goes over the center, left goes over right, under center, through this loop. Just like this. And then I do the left over center, right over left, under center, through the loop. Okay, I have two square knots, and I'm going to do two more. Right side, 
left over right under center through the loop. Okay, and then the left, right goes over left under center through the loop. I have three knots, one more. Right goes over the center, left goes over right under the center cords and through this loop. Okay, just like that. To do the button loop, I'm gonna take the clip off down here so my cords are now loose. I'm going to separate the cords and I'm going to work with one side at a time tying the same knot. I like to hold it like this, but I guess if you want to, you can also attach this down. Okay, but I just want some space to move my hands underneath here. So I have to take my cord and go from the bottom like this, put my fingers through this loop, grab this cord, and pull it up. Like that. Okay. And now I'm going to go over the top of this cord. Like this. Grab the tail and pull it up. I'm going to try and adjust my camera some so you can see better. Zoom in. Okay, I'm going to go from the bottom now, fingers to the loop, grab the tail, pull it through, slide that, and now I have to go on the top, pull the tail through the loop, slide it up, pull that knot down, I have to go to the bottom, okay, on the top, bottom and I just go from top to bottom back and forth really I did bottom and I'm going to do top because I have to make this long enough for my button to be able to go through this okay I'm going to zoom back out now if you're doing this right, this will remain flat, and you'll see that you have these bumps. I'll zoom back in. See these bumps here on the right going vertical? You'll see them very clearly. You can tell this looks very clean, okay? If I tied this wrong, it's going to start looking messy right away. Okay? And I can tell which knot I tied last because I look at the cord here that's on this cord, and I follow it. And where is it going? It's going underneath. So I tied the bottom last. Now I'm going to tie the top. Okay, so the cord goes over the top, through the loop, pulling this up. See how this comes from the bottom around over the top through the loop there? Okay, so looking at this, after pulling it tight, you can see that this cord did pass over the top. So now it's the bottom's turn. So I go underneath, pull through, pull this up, pull that tight, you can see that I just completed the bump there on the side. So I hope this makes sense. I'm going to do it a few more times. I did the bottom one last, now I'm going to do top and through this loop. Okay, bottom, oops, bottom and now top okay and then bottom and I'm gonna stop here and I'm gonna go to the other side because I want to make sure that I'm not making this too long. I might have to take a couple knots out or add some, depending on if my button will fit through here. So now I'm going to go through this side. Now this side, I have to do this one backwards than how I started this one. 
because of my bumps. I have to go by the, the bumps over here. So I think that I might actually attach this one. Should I do that? Let me see. Just to keep this from flopping in the wind. If I go like this, I'll move it over here. Like this, is this better? Okay, so this one, I think I'm gonna go from the bottom and then through the loop. Let's see, is that not correct? Nope, it is not. See that, it doesn't look right. So I'm gonna take my pen and get it out. Okay, so that means that I have to go from the top. I thought I started the other side of the top, but I can't really remember. Okay, so I wrapped around the top, came out the bottom. Now that fits and looks just right, okay? Now I'm going to take the cord and go around the bottom, through the loop. Pull this knot down. I always pull it tight and I slide, slide it down my fingernail there. Okay, that looks clean. Now I have to go over the top, through the loop. All right, I'm going to keep going. Now All right, so as you can see, I just stopped here because I wanted to see if I needed to take some out or add some more. One side is longer than the other right now. Okay, can you see that? Now I'm going to take my button and see if it fits here. So I'm just going to go just like this. Now I want to be able to see the gap right there and a gap over here. This is going to let me know if my button is going to fit through this when I tie it off. So it needs to be like right there. So I think that I will add one more knot on this side. And then I'm going to tie it off and we'll see if that's good or not. Okay? Because you do want a teeny little space there and a teeny little bit of space over here. So let's see. Um, on this side, I finish off with the bottom knot. So now I'm going to do top like this, the top knot, pull this tight, okay, I slid this one up by going like that, because one cord you're gonna be wanting to go down and the other one you're gonna want to point up and it's usually the right side that I get to point up because I continue this knot so that it looks just like this over here really clean where it's very continuous you don't see any weird uh, spots I have it looking really tidy all right so now I'm gonna attach this back to my board I'm gonna zoom in a little bit more here we're gonna continue tying square knots I'm gonna take the right Cord, go over the two left and then the left is going to go over the right okay and then I'm going to grab the right cord I'm going to use pliers so you guys can see just like this okay and now I'm going to swap and I'm going to do the left on the side and then right over left, under the center, that's one square knot, okay, and then I'm going to do the right, so I, t I just tied two square knots really, right? Is my camera moving again on me? Just like that. Left goes over the right. Okay. And then the left goes underneath the center. Just like that. I pull that very tight. This cord is so strong. So I did the right and now I'm going to do the left. And this will be the last knot that I tie here. Right goes over the left, 
and then underneath and right here okay this is the very last knot pull that tight so I tied two square knots now I'm going to remove this from my board after tying your two square knots you're going to want to make sure that your button fits through your loop here Okay, it does, that's great. And you're gonna wanna try this on and make sure it fits you. If you try it on and it's too big, you're gonna have to undo these knots. I know it seems probably terrible, but I, I do this all the time. I'm constantly undoing things and remaking things. It's just all a part of making jewelry. But I do recommend that if you undo these knots, take like this tool here and use it to undo them. It works great. You can also use a bead all or even like this t-pin here and pick them but um, you can snag the cord with it this if you're not careful I have done it I do it both ways I like doing it both ways but um yeah it's all part of designing take it apart and then if if it's too big you're gonna take some beads out and what you can do before you start undoing it is measure it right now and you can figure out how many you have to take out to make it fit you just right and then once you take your beads out you redo all this knotting again try it on again make sure it fits you um, I, ha I did have to do that two times when I first made this to figure it out because you know depending on what size button you use that can factor in on how long your bracelet's going to be. That's going to change it for you, okay? And um, same thing, if it's too small, you will have to take the end apart to add beads. So that's pretty much it with that there. Now, the, the last thing that I do is I take these cords here, and I, I take a... Uh, see, there's not much waste here, because I don't like wasting. I take um, needle nose pliers, and I tie a knot. So I just go like this... Make sure that last knot's tight though before you go any further. Okay? I go like this. And I wrap these cords around. Make sure they're all parallel to each other so this looks like a clean knot like this. I go like this. Okay? Grab these four ends. I wrap them around. I grab them with my pliers like this and I just pull them through. Pretty simple. Okay? And then I tidy up the knot, adjust it, get it looking pretty. I pull it down and then I pull each cord individually tight. And if you want, you can put a bead onto each end, like I did in this one. And then just tie a simple overhand knot, just like we tied here, right here. That knot, that's an overhand knot. Tie that knot again, but you're going to be doing it with one cord. And then I just burn the end so the knot didn't unravel. And that's it. It's pretty simple. So this is it. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Please like this video. Leave me a comment. Subscribe if you want to. See more of my videos, make sure you click the bell button so that you get notified when I upload new videos and check me on social media sites. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, and Twitter. Thanks for watching.